Welcome, everybody. It's time for another episode of SLMA Radio. And Laura Patterson's back today with Ready, Set, Grow, where she interviews C-level executives from across various industries to discuss how they've organically grown their companies. These tell-all programs are focused on revealing the tools and techniques the guests have used to fuel their above-average growth. From the one woman who seems to know a lot of people with above-average growth, (laughs) it's Laura Patterson. Hey, Laura, how are you? Hey, Paul. We are so excited to be with you guys again. Thank you so much. And welcome, everybody, to the Ready, Set, Grow SLMA radio show, where, as Paul said, we gain insights and wisdom from members of the C-suite on how to grow organically and the role they expect marketing to play in that growth and how they will measure marketing's contribution. Thanks for joining us. If you missed our earlier episodes with Steve Ziggy Shanklin, CEO of White Cloud Security, or J.T. McCormick, CEO of Scribe Media, catch the replays on the Vision Edge Marketing website in the recording section. But today, I'm very excited that we're talking with Dave Sakura, CEO of Alter. And what's really, really exciting is that I've known Dave a long time from a, when we were both in previous lives, so it's wonderful to reconnect with him in this new role. Dave is a longtime software industry veteran and Austin um, community member. He previously served as CEO of two public and five private venture capital-backed software companies, and he's held the board of director position with four public companies. So he has an enormous amount of wisdom and insight into running a company and growing them. He executed the first Internet software IPO in the state of Texas in 1995. Yes, that's how far back Dave and I go, but who's counting? And collectively, his companies have raised over $100 million in venture capital. He has experience both with exits and value creation events of almost a billion dollars. Uh, most recently, before Alter, he, uh, Dave was CEO of Stratford, which was a global intelligence and research firm with industry-leading products focused on emerging global physical and cyber security threats. And that's an important segue uh, because today Dave is involved with a relatively newer company, which is called Alter. So Alter is a data security company. And notice my reference to the concept of data security far more than just cyber security. And the company has invented a way to take data, whether it's in a transactional database or a file system, and do what Dave calls scatter it and they scatter it to private blockchain. So isn't it really cool that we're talking about what is kind of an emerging and developing technology blockchains? Uh, I'll let Dave tell you more about that, but in the meantime, I'd like to introduce Dave, get us going, and um, let's talk about growth, particularly growth for Alter. Welcome, Dave. Uh, well, Laura, thank you very much. It's really a pleasure to be here. And you, the way you set me up, I, I, I think wisdom, it's mostly my gray hair. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. No one can see you. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Well, you know, as a CEO of Alter, you know, I realize that it's still early days, but it's exciting right. times. That's right. I suspect that organic growth is right at the top of your list. Well, yeah. I mean, as you know, it's <laughs> I, I'd say numero uno, right? Yes. And Alter is a unique company in that we've been around for just over four years now, but we just came out of stealth just over 30 days ago. And so we have an incredible team of technologists who've been heads down building a great product for the better part of four years. And so now I have this awesome opportunity to take this product that this great team has been building, take it to market. And uh, as you well know, because I mean we've both been in this business, that value creation in our business happens as a function of the top line. That's it. And it's it's, it doesn't. It seems that over time, company enterprise value creation ultimately revolves around earnings and you know EBITDA. But but in the early days, it's really all about revenue growth. And we're not out. I I, I don't really have a public currency to go make an acquisition. Uh, it's it's all organic. I, I have to take what we have, which is quite substantial in terms of technical raw materials and uh, find ways to get that out into the market and it's where we are all aligned here around organic growth that's all that's what that's our story and i'm so glad that you came out of stealth in time to do this radio program with just me. in time just in time that was on we were thinking about that yeah. <laughs> so one of the things i'm we're talking about revenue and i want to get back to that but 
uh, there's no revenue without customers. That's right. <laughs> so, so I think right now, you know, that's the way to be thinking is not just revenue, right? But to help people with or understand the value proposition around organic growth is really around, in this case, net new customer acquisition. It, it is, and you know, at at some level, you have to assume you, you you've worked on product market fit. I mean, that's a big concept here is uh, is making sure that the investments you're making in R and D manifest themselves. In a positive way in the market, and that you're building stuff that people actually want to buy, right? And so, but in the early days, you don't necessarily know all that. It's it's a little cloudy. It's like you know being in a dark room and looking for the light switch. You know, kind you want to find that light switch, <laughs> and and so the way to find that light switch is is you've got to get out there, press the flesh with potential prospects and customers. Uh, you have to listen. You can't just go out and tell your story. You have to really open your ears and uh, and find, you know, try and find some common denominators. What what are people saying? What are their challenges? What are their problems? And and so that that first year of coming out is a is a pretty important year and getting on the ground with key identified areas and targets that um, that you have. You know. Get, getting in market. Yeah, and you and I were talking earlier, this is the whole reason why marketing uh, needs to be thinking about the upstream, particularly at this stage in development. Absolutely. And so we we did, that's right, we were talking about upstream and downstream. And, and I have this expression that if upstream is polluted, then downstream, or if, if your upstream is bad, then downstream will be polluted in, the, in kind of the demand gen and tactical marketing. And so you have to you really have to get that product market fit right, and and that gives you the raw materials then to go create really strong uh, marketing communications programs, getting your message out, et cetera. But you can't really do that until you've you've really nailed it with customers and with the market. Exactly. So before we spend more time talking about marketing, I know one of the things, having known you and worked with you in the past, that's important to you is culture. Yes. And um, this is the team right now is, is humming right along, and it's still a relatively small team. That's right. Right? Uh, it's under 100 people, right? That's right, yeah. And so tell me a little bit and our audience a little bit about the role you think culture plays in organic growth at this stage. Yeah, at this, and so it's a, it's a great question, and, and I, I'm, I'm a very big believer in culture. I think that, that one, of the, one of the ways that, that we've looked at it here, and, and the, actually I've learned over the years that – that um, at this phase, we're, we're, I would say that we're in a zero to one phase. And a zero to one phase is, um, uh, presents a lot of ambiguity. You, you don't necessarily have customers. You, you, know, you have some market feedback. You have great technology. Um, but you need a team during that zero to one phase that can deal with those obstacles, can deal with those challenges. And and then once you get past that zero to one phase and go to one to two, those are different people. Um, scaling a business, taking something from zero to one is very different from going from one to two. And so the team that we have on the ground right now is, in my opinion, a world-class zero to one team. That's not to say that the zero to ones can't straddle into a one to two or even personally have the skill set to get to a one to two but um, taking that first hill requires a certain type of individual and it's it requires a certain type of chemistry from a culture standpoint so if i were to ask you three characteristics of a growth culture in the zero to one phase do i only get three you only get three (laughs) what three would you say are the most important i would say i would say that that um number one uh, you have to be transparent because you you have to let people know what's happening all the time. Um, otherwise, it, because you're you're dealing with daily, weekly, highly engaged interactions with the market, you have to provide a lot of feedback. So you have to be transparent. Um, the next is, I think that you have to you have to be open to debate and you have to accept criticism and and I, I suppose you could say that's part of transparency but but that um, that idea of bringing new things you're bringing something new that's never been brought to market and you're going to get punched in the face 
And you have to deal with that openly. The team has to deal with that openly. And then I, I think the third is you, you have to be incredibly tenacious. And, and the culture has to embrace that, that you, you, you really have to get out and push. Oh, that's one of my favorite words, tenacity. <laughs> I can totally relate to that. Yes. <laughs> no, yeah. And I know yeah. you know I can. Absolutely. So um, we're going to jump into talking about marketing. I know we'll have to sure. take a break in a moment, so we'll come sure. back if we don't finish. But let's talk about the role you think marketing <clears throat> plays in driving organic growth and how well you think marketing as a discipline does that today. Sure. So what I would say, and, and this gets back to what we were talking about earlier, that let's separate from the upstream from the downstream, yes. right? And especially at this stage, we're we're living in an upstream world. I mean, we have to have downstream activities because we have to create demand, we have to create leads, and we have to create interest for our message and for our solution. But... Um, I think that initially here, the role of marketing has a lot to do with product market fit and getting out, talking with customers, talking with prospects, and and talking with analysts as well. What are the you know figuring out what the problems are that folks have, and and how does that map to your offering and and ultimately into your messaging? So I would say, really focus now on upstream. And how well do you think the marketing discipline as a discipline today, not here at Alter, but in, as in general, Just, you've been around a long time, does at upstream marketing? I, I think in general it does well, but I, I would say it's, it's a really interesting question because like, here we are in Austin, and Austin is well known for being a software center, mostly enterprise software, not consumer software. And, and so I think that, that you can look at, at uh, this as a geographic issue that that we have we have real a really strong upstream product management and product marketing culture in Austin, but we don't. If I tried to do the same thing in Houston or even in Dallas, I would not find that culture exists. So so we're lucky where we are, and I think you'll find that in other pockets. Boston, Silicon Valley, you'll find that culture and that talent to, to, to be there. But but for building, go to getting the zero to one, building great new software products, we're in a good spot. Awesome. Well, I think we need to take a break, and we'll come back in just a moment and pick okay. up the conversation. All right. Is that going? And we just want to remind everybody that Vision Edge Marketing is there for you. They work with chief executive financial marketing growth strategy and customer insight officers in a variety of industries, manufacturing, technology, financial services, even medical devices like those here in Orange County. And they particularly specialize with companies facing growth or performance challenges. Customers rely on Vision Ed Marketing's expertise to make more effective and faster fact-based decisions regarding customers, markets, products, and the competition. They can also help you improve and prove the value of marketing and leverage data analytics processes and measurement to increase marketing's relevance and ability to deliver greater business impact. It's a big promise, but they deliver. Go find out more at their website, visionedgemarketing.com. That's visionedgemarketing.com. Back to Laura. Back to Laura and her guest as she's uh, ready to uh, launch into more growth strategies here. Thank you. So we're back here with Dave Sikora, CEO of Alter. And we're talking about marketing. And before we move on to some other parts of the conversation, I want to wrap up the marketing part, particularly sure. talking about measurement. Again, have, you and I go back a long way. Right, right. And I know you're a strong believer in accountability for all uh, aspects of the business, including marketing. But here you are in this business. We already kind of alluded to one potential metric. But as you're looking at measuring the success of the business and measuring the contribution that marketing is going to make, what are some of the key ways that you expect marketing to measure its value? I know you said net new customers. Right, right. And and again, I, I do think in terms of the, the marketing spectrum, you know, starting with product management through product marketing and then marketing communications, which really includes lead generation, et cetera, and, and branding and and so each each one of those areas has their own 
kinds of accountability metrics. And, and so for us, you know, given, given where we are, it's not really about how many leads we're generating. It's certainly going to be about customer um, uh, growth and, and number of customers for us. But um, we're, um, we're really focused on getting to market here in the next 9 to 12 months with, with a small, when I say small, I mean 40 to 50 enterprise oriented customers and and so we're going to we're going to measure our success based on how many pilots we can start how how those how many of those pilots will convert into you know production license agreements uh, when we sign partners how many how many customers can we get in front of through some of those partners to get leverage in our marketing capabilities i think once we establish a core foundation uh, or presence in the market, then I think the back half, the debt more, we're, we're going to start doing a lot more downstream marketing capabilities, you know, promoting the successes that we've had with certain customers. And then we can focus a lot more on things like lead generation, lead conversion rates, et cetera. Um, but this, this first phase is really foundational. And, uh, and so uh, building, building our early pilot customer base is, is really our number one objective. And I'm assuming from those pilots, not only converting, but being really good referrals. You hit it right on the head. Absolutely, because in this that's, business, that's going to be important. They, when um, it, the, the voice of the customer is a hundred times louder than the voice of the vendor. Well, for sure. But in this business, I would also suspect because of how technical it is, and um, it's not only going to be how well the product works, although that's going to be extremely important. Right. But the overall experience they have going through. This is a very new technology. That's that. That's right, and and that is that. That's that is another consideration in that the technology that we have is so transformative and it's so unique. So I would say next generation. That um, you know, it's um, it, it's it's a challenge for us to um, communicate that that what we have can take our customers to an entirely new level of data security that. They didn't know even existed. So we've got to we we have to to be able to tell the market that we're here, that this this opportunity, this next generation exists, and uh, so uh, so that that is part of our challenge. So I think education back to marketing and the role there. There's a lot of education that needs to happen. So uh, just one more time, try to articulate to the, our listeners what all. Alter is doing and why it is so transformational before you tell us about how you got here. Right, right. So what we do, and Lori said it uh, pretty well up front about how we, we can take data from enterprise database systems, transactional databases, or from file systems. And what we can do is we can actually break it apart. It's, in some areas, that's called rage driving. We can break it apart and store it on distributed nodes of a blockchain network. Or, or series of networks, and then we can reassemble that data with very low latency when the application or when the, the user needs that data. And so what that means is imagine, imagine a house, and the, the, the cybersecurity industrial complex has basically been built around moats, which protect, you know, think of the physical analogy, a moat protecting a home or a castle. What we have is the equivalent. We've assumed the moats will be breached. And uh, what we have is the equivalent when the bad guy breaches the moat and gets in the house, there's nothing in the house for the bad guy to use, but the house is still operational. And that's really profound. Mm -hmm. and, and, so, and so that's at the net net. That's you know, just a, a one exa real life example of what, what we can do. No, it's pretty exciting. I was trying to explain it to Mark, my husband, okay. a little bit. And uh, I, I got a little way out there talking about like being in another dimension. The stuff is there, you just can't see it, and it's not where you can normally get it. But when you need it, it comes together. It comes together. That's exactly right. You've got, you've got that. You've got that. But th I'll tell you, the, the, the really cool thing it's about it. It's like a video it, of that. Yeah, right, right. The, um, uh, what's amazing is. You know, I was around, and uh, we talked about this earlier, um, just given our respective experience in, in the business. But I was around when uh, when the internet came out in '95, right? <laughs> yes, I, yes, yes, I, yeah. yes, I, I remember. Yeah, yeah, and 
And so, but um, compared to blockchain, the internet was really one dimensional because in order for blockchain to succeed at scale, we need three things. We need we need phenomenal processing capacity. We need really large data pipes, and we need really inexpensive storage. And and so you need the first two for consensus algorithms, and you need the third one because you're replicating lots of data. And the stuff that we do now couldn't be done three years ago, right. which is amazing. Is and so having yeah. seen that, and that's why it's so exciting. When you think about the opportunities with blockchain in general, because of those preconditions accelerating in place right now, it's it's, it's really, really quite interesting. Yeah, definitely speed here. We have a speeding train. And speaking of speed, I know we only have a few minutes left. And so before we close, Dave, and thank you again for joining us today. But before we close, a couple of two, uh, two things on the personal front for on you. Part, oh, boy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of people in the audience, some of whom are already you know, in the C-suite and others who hopefully will be making their journey there. So two quick things, a little bit about your path to CEO. And I know you've been a CEO for a very long time in right. various capacities. So if you could kind of go back a little quickly into memory lane and think about that path. And then lastly, you know, any insights or lessons learned or pearls of wisdom you would offer to someone on that journey? Okay, okay. So, yeah, it, it, it has been quite a journey. Um, I consider myself blessed. This is really my eighth CEO job, um, having been uh, two public CEO roles and and other privates. And, and I... I guess in my my first CEO role, I I just kind of stumbled into. I won't go into that story because <laughs> it would take it would take another show to to do. Um, but you know when I when I look at what I do, it's funny because you you bring a marketing orientation here, and I always thought, well, I I don't think I'd be a very good VP of marketing. I wouldn't be a good VP of sales. I wouldn't be a good CFO. I wouldn't be a good head of HR. And and I think, well, then how could I possibly you know, be a good CEO. I, I, I guess I, I stay at it, and I, I know enough about all of those areas to really be dangerous. I think. I guess maybe that's that's one way to look at it. But well, I've always um, thought you were very good at asking thoughtful questions. Um, intellectual curiosity has always been one of the. Uh, I would I would be reprimanded growing up. What, could you just stop asking questions? <laughs> you know, you're a pain. <laughs> stop that. And, I remember uh, that you are very good at asking and, questions. And so, but but I guess I would just say that that um, a couple things. One, my path here. I'm, I consider myself really fortunate to have this opportunity because this this company, this technology, is. Uh, represents one of the most transformative things that I've ever had the chance to see. And I see hundreds of deals around Austin in, in the community. And so I'm so, I feel like a lot of things I've done in my past have come together to take advantage of this opportunity. The, uh, the, the last thing I would leave you with, and just in terms of uh, if there's a pearl wisdom in here, is that um, I would just say, don't, don't get too drunk. <laughs> when things are going well, and don't get too down when things aren't, um, because neither one of those are true. That's right. And so, got to stay in the middle. That's a really good pearl of wisdom. And thank you again for being with us today. And I believe we need to wrap it up. And with that, I'd like to say thanks to everyone and turn it back to Paul. Thank you. You've been listening to another episode of SLMA Radio with Ready Set Grow this week, right here on the ever growing. Funnel Radio Network for at work listeners like you.